what's going on you guys i hope y'all can see me and just deal with the light right quick because you know i have to um change some stuff so that's what it is but anyway we are back and i'm finally here to do almost christmas because what it's almost christmas <laughs> what y'all doing for christmas okay put it down in the comments y'all going out <clears throat> visiting family or are y'all hosting something or whatever or you just chilling by yourself i will be chilling by myself you know um talk to my people on the phone and all that stuff facetiming and all that my sisters was here this past weekend so you know we got all that out the way but hey it is what it is um i'm actually in a good mood because as y'all already know i get a little depressed around the holiday season at the end of the month but you know i'm here I'm, I'm, I'm good, you know what I'm saying? Which I'm so glad. And I watched this movie, Almost Christmas, and I will say this. Almost Christmas is not one of those movies that I watch constantly because for a time, it wasn't even on streaming services, right? It, it wasn't on streaming service just like this Christmas. And I don't even know if this Christmas was on the streaming service, services a while ago. I just know it just got up there on Peacock. So if you want to watch, especially have something to watch with your family, you know, um, some of y'all probably already be watching with your family, but it's Christmas or whatever. Um, go watch it. Both movies are on Peacock, okay? Most of the movies that I have reviewed are on Peacock right about now. But anyway, so we get up into Almost Christmas. Almost Christmas is, it's hilarious to me, Okay. Um, I think I remember going to the movies to see this and it was a good time. It was a good time. Um, again, if it's black casted and it looked like it's going to be funny, we're going to go see it no matter what. Okay. Um, and mostly because Monique was in that. It was when Monique was going through a lot of stuff that she was going through. I think this was probably like one of her last major roles before all of that, you know, controversy happened with her. And when I tell you Monique made this movie, it was Monique and, um, what's his name? J.B. Smooth. J.B. Smooth playing Lonnie and Monique playing Aunt May. Oh, they made this movie so hilarious. I was just, oh, it's one of those things that I just, I forget how funny it is. Because I'm not going to lie. It's been a minute since I watched this movie, but... The standout has always been Monique and Ben Lonnie. So, you know, there's that. But this movie is a feel-good movie. Again, another wholesome black movie, okay? We have successful black family coming together for the holidays. And <clears throat> unfortunately, this is one of the first holidays that they have, having or one Christmas that they're all getting together since the matriarch of the family, their mother, has passed away. Now, you got Danny Glover playing the dad, and you have um, Monique playing Aunt May, who was the mother's um, sister. And so, it just goes to show how great of a person the mother was, and I loved at the beginning of the movie, it does that timeline from 1971 when they was first getting together and they didn't even have a, a, a bed frame to sleep in. They ain't even had no real furniture. They were sleeping on a mattress on the floor, right? All the way up to when they was having their kids and how their family expanded and how it was just, regardless of what was going on, it was still love. And, and, and he was so deep in love with her. He was so deep in love with her. And that's one thing that I love to see on movies on TV uh, shows or whatever, or even in real life, come across black couples, okay? I just love it, you know what I'm saying? Especially them older ones. Oh, it just be everything to me because it's like, oh, maybe one day I wanna get there, you know what I'm saying? That could be my future, I don't know, I don't know. But unfortunately, she passed away unexpectedly, right? So now you have the kids that are grown up and they're going through their things, okay? Daddy want them all to come together, and it's five days. They're going to be here five days before Christmas, right? And this is where everybody show up. You got Christian, who's the oldest boy. They have two boys and two girls. Cheryl, she's the oldest, right? Um, Played by Kimberly Elise. I feel like this was the last movie that I seen Kimberly Elise in, that she was actually the Kimberly Elise that I knew from. Set it all. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, my goodness. What was the show? What was the show? Oh, 
Not single ladies, but um, because I used to review it. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. What is the show? Hit the floor. Hit the floor. Baby, I don't know what happened after that. I really don't know what happened after that. Like, mama really went to another path, okay? We need to check on our good sis and make sure she all right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's okay to find God, and it's okay to be, you know, into the Christian faith and everything, because a lot of us are Christian, but she take it over in the beyond. She is almost giving fanatical, extreme fanaticalism. It's giving, it's giving like, baby, we, you okay? You okay? It's totally different. And I just really was confused when I seen all this because I used to follow her. I said, oh, girl, what's happening? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Hold on one second, y'all. I'm back. But anyway, yes. But her character is the oldest and her name is Cheryl. I said, baby, you could tell she was born back in the day, like in the 60s, 70s. We know she was born in 71 or something like that. Um, Because Cheryl, who is naming their kids Cheryl these days? All right. Meanwhile, you got the second oldest or you got the, I think the second oldest is Christian and he's the, uh, their son, first son. And, you know, first of all, Cheryl is married to Lonnie. Lonnie want to tell everybody that he used to play basketball. He got his own basketball card and he got a championship ring from Croatia. Okay. He played basketball overseas, right? And he'll tell any and everybody about it, you know. Meanwhile, you got Christian who is married to, I don't even, I didn't even get her name. And at this point, it ain't even really important. But um, Nicole Ari Parker plays his wife. And basically, he's running for Congress, okay? Um, he's in a political, you know, situation. And that's what he's doing, okay? And um, meanwhile, you have Rachel, played by Gabrielle Union, and she's basically the struggling sibling of them all. She was married. She had goals to do this. And she's like changed her profession and her career, you know, um, path a couple of times. And now she's in law school, right? She also has a daughter. And she's struggling. Like she's struggling bad to the point where she couldn't even get a car fixed. She couldn't even, um, they had to, She it, she's struggling. But yet she don't want help. She's on the phone with Christian, and he's trying to get them a plane ticket, plane tickets to come out there because they're going back to Alabama. They're coming from different places where they're at. And she don't want to put her pride to the side and just be like, okay, cool. Because she's like, I don't need help. I got it. Meanwhile, the, the, the tire that she <laughs> is getting fixed is so messed up that she needs to get a new one. You know what I'm saying? And she can't afford that. She already got a couple of dummy tires on there, and that's just like... Now they got to get on the bus because she don't want to let him buy a ticket for them to get on the plane. Baby, I ain't never that prideful. <laughs> I ain't finna get on no Greyhound bus. I I no, no, no. When the ride could be an hour or two, baby, we ain't finna do all of that. Okay, give me that ticket. Give me that ticket, all right? Um. Meanwhile, you also got hella love interest in this movie, Malachi, played by Omar Epps. This is when Omar Epps... He looked better in this movie than what... I'm not saying that he looked bad, but he looked better in this movie than what he looked like now on Power. <laughs> Y'all get what I'm saying? Okay. But, uh, and I'm not... Like I said, he's not... A, he don't look bad, but he looked better in this movie. You can tell that, you know, the age is coming in. That's just what it is. But he still looked decent for the most part. Um, meanwhile, who else you got on here? Mind you, Christian got two kids as well. A son and a daughter. Well, actually three. Uh, well, two, son and a daughter, a little, do a little daughter and a son, Cameron or whatever. Um, meanwhile, you got the youngest one of the bunch and his name is Evan. He's still up in uh, college. He's playing football. Now see, Evan's problem is he's spoiled. You can tell he's the mama's boy, of course. And you know, he had an injury. He had a sports injury. He hurt his shoulder. We see him first with the ice all over his shoulder. Then his coach tell him basically, you know, you've been approved to come back and you your, your shoulder and everything is looking good. You can be back on the field and you don't have to take these pills no more for um, the pain and all that stuff. And he was like, cool, cool, cool. So instead of just throwing the pills away, what he do? He put them up in his bag. So basically, we see his storyline because it really wasn't much. He's super animated. 
And we don't know if that's really just his personality or if that has anything to do with the little opioid addiction that he's kind of gradually getting into because we see him take a couple of pills when he was at the house, you know, getting ready to go to church. Okay, we see him take, you know, act DC Young Fly was up in this as well. DC Young Fly was his homeboy that came through. Um, I guess they grew up together, went to school together. Um, you know, and he's the type of person that can get whatever you need. And if he needs some, you know, a hookup, he knows somebody that can get it for him, and that's what he needed. And so he got him some pills when they went to the uh, a restaurant. And Monica was there. I said, you know what, Monica? Every time you up in a movie, you always playing somebody waitress. What is up with that? Because remember when she was in ATL? Man, at least in this ep uh, this movie, I keep on thinking like I'm finna review an episode or something. In this movie, at least her attitude wasn't that bad. <laughs> because y'all remember when she was in ATL? I said, that's really Monica right there, for real, for real. But see, this is a more mature Monica a little bit. I mean, you know, she she got better with the customer service because she wasn't giving too much attitude. You know, she was flirting a little bit with little Evan, but um, DC Young Fly, because he was just doing the most, she, she, she paid him no man, okay? But anyway, so you got that going on. And then it was DC Young Fly's character, keep on, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> flirting with Aunt May, and she was like, I got vibrators older than him, okay? You know, and <laughs> that 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 whole comedy relief of the movie was needed because there was some parts on here that was a little heavy. You know, you're dealing with the death of a loved one, and, you know, you're dealing with sibling rivalry. What is this on my shirt? You're dealing with sibling rivalry, sibling discord, and all that stuff. And at one point, I was when I was watching this, I said... One thing that I don't like sometimes about these movies when it comes together, when it's having like a family movie and it's about the family coming back together, I just don't like it when they say, or when it's always like at least one or two siblings, no, two siblings are going at each other. They have an issue with each other. Um, they're fighting, you know, it's a long time animosity built up and everything. So they're going back and forth. We think that somewhere when I'm um, in this Christmas a little bit, even though they still was kind of, you had the, the two daughters, sisters, they were still on the same, um, you know, they still liked each other, but you could tell it was some stuff. It's a, it's a competition. It was a rivalry going on. Then you get almost Christmas right here, and you see Cheryl and Rachel going at each other. And when you first watch it, it's like, what is the issue? Who did what to who? Because it just feels like Cheryl, given that you the oldest, she was really having this vendetta or she just had this thing against Rachel so bad. Like she took every opportunity to make it seem or to show that she was doing better than her. Okay. Like, I mean, you the oldest, I would hope you doing a little bit better. And cause you I mean, you had a little bit more time to get established. Um, you know, you clowning her because she no longer, uh, Mary, she got divorced and she's struggling talking about she working at the waffle house to pay off her. Um, you know, now what you are, you trying to be an attorney after you was trying to do veterinarian and all this stuff. I said, Oh my God. And nobody stepped in and told that lady to stop. Like, at that moment in time, I was like, why are y'all doing this? I wanted some real backstory. I know, I know, mind you, the movie was almost two hours long anyway. And I love the fact that they put the bloopers at the end, too. But I wanted a little bit of backstory, like a little flashback to get to why Cheryl and Rachel had the issues that they had. And I know when they was at the end and they do come together because eventually that was, that did happen. They came together and all that. You know, it was one of those, I looked up to you type of situation. No, I looked up to you and I thought this of you. No, I thought this of you and all this stuff. Okay, so then why was y'all going back and forth and why was y'all being so nasty to each other? I need to understand that, okay? Meanwhile, um... Rachel, her daughter was getting her to get her together. Because, again, she that type of person that, listen, listen, I don't need your help, okay? I got it myself. I could do it all myself. I'm independent and all of that. That's fine or whatever. But it's okay to want to have somebody to help. You can't do it all the time. I want to know if Rachel or Capricorn. Because let me just tell you something. We have a problem with, oh, I sound like one of those people that always bring the astrological sign in and the horoscopes and stuff. Damn. 
But I'm just saying, because listen, sometimes we don't like to ask for help. No, a lot of times, 100% of the time, we don't like to ask for help. It pains us to ask for help. We want to figure it out and we want to exhaust every single option and possibility there is before we muster up the 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 gall, <laughs> okay, um, and put our pride to the side to ask for help. That's what she was doing. She couldn't even let Malachi, who was a friend of hers from when they was in school, um, I guess they had a little thing for each other, um, and he's back in town for the Christmas break as well, and so that's played by all my apps. Couldn't even let him help her take her bags up. I mean, okay, you could be independent, but if that man want to help you, them bags was really heavy. You know, you ain't got to do everything all the time. It ain't going to make you seem like you can't do nothing. Like, damn, people just be trying to be nice or whatever. And her daughter had to get her together about that. When my principal or when my teacher or whoever at, uh, said, oh, you got some nice hair. Oh, because you, you think because I got my braids, I can't do this and I can't do I said, you know what? I can't stand a person like that. Okay? I really cannot stand a person like that. Baby, take the compliment take the com girl let me tell you something about i was at work today and i just don't understand i do not understand how do you wake up in the morning do and this is i'm sorry we're gonna have to put this on pause because it it it, it, it just bothered me for a second it just the, the i don't know it just came back to me i was at work today and i just don't understand how you just wake up and you just come out the house. If you know that you got strong body or that's older and then you go and work out or you doing a strenuous activity that causes you to sweat or whatever, that's fine. But at least make sure your hygiene is together, okay? Because there's no reason why you should be musty so early in the goddamn morning and then it's just so strong and potent. Because that's how I was when my co-worker came to work uh, today. I don't understand what was happening. I really don't. Okay, and it just makes me feel like what some of these things been saying on the internet and social media about how certain people do not take a shower every day. This is why we need to take a shower every day and we need deodorant. I don't care which kind you use. You need to put some on. Because my goodness, I mean, just was flocking around everybody. We all just like, God damn. I just had to put that out there because it was bothering me so bad. But anyway, we get to that. Um, Cheryl and, 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 and Rachel, baby, they burnt up each other's food. Well, it was actually Rachel that did that because Cheryl put that macaroni up in the oven. Rachel going to come through and take it off the top shelf, put it on the bottom shelf, and put her dressing in the oven on this first shelf, and then going to turn it up twice as high. I said, she said twice as high half the cooking time. No, baby, that ain't how it work. It cooked too damn fast and it burnt it up. Now y'all got to do it all over again. Meanwhile, the daddy, before they was getting the people to come, he was trying to find a mama um, 10 of recipes. She had the 10 can that she put all of her recipes in and she was trying to make the, uh, I think it was like a sweet potato pie. Couldn't find it. Was trying to make it off of memory and off of taste or whatever. And of course he messed it up. Okay. And so he was frustrated at that. And... I was just like, you know what? Y'all see y'all daddy look old as hell. That's what uh, Aunt May said. It was like, ooh, I didn't know you look this old, man. <laughs> I said, you ain't have to do that. I was like, they dyed Danny Glover hair and everything. He he looked like he was on, um, I don't know if y'all seen the movie 2012. Yeah, when he played the president on that. Oh, he bothered me so much because... He had got teeth. You could tell he had got some new teeth. All right. And it was a little bit too big and he didn't know how to talk with him. Okay. So it was, you know. And so with him, we see him go down to a shelter before the people come. Well, while they was coming in, the, the kids was coming in. He goes down to a shelter. And this shelter been in their family, well, close to his wife. Because her family had to go to the shelter or something like that when uh, Aunt May was born because they couldn't, you know, afford stuff and all that. And so she just took a liking to the shelter, helped everything out about it, you know, helped keep it up. Once she got on her feet, once she got married and everything, we saw one of the directors and owners of the shelter was Gladys Knight. Gladys, Gladys. Okay, I said, look at Gladys. Look at Gladys, you know? And so it was cute. 
just to see him, you know, going into that memory of her and just seeing her all the time. And then when she he got that photo of her and him and he was just saying, oh, yeah, you look so good, girl. You look good, girl. I said, oh, baby, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't tell a real relationship. Baby, I'm going to love up on mine. Okay. I'm just going to tell you that. I got a lot of love to give. Okay. But anyway, so that was cute, right? Um, meanwhile, we get to Christian. Christian, like I said, he's trying to get, you know, I don't know if it was in the Senate or just Congress in general. He's trying to get up in there, right? He's trying to get on the hill. And he has this campaign manager, white guy. I, you've seen him before on plenty of other things. I just can't remember his name. And he's just, mind you, your wife told you don't do business and don't be on the phone with the business or whatever while you out here enjoying your family. Just enjoy your family. It's just five days. Cut it off, okay? But instead of doing that, he brings a campaign manager so that he can do the work. But yet the campaign manager is telling him, you know, one of their biggest ba uh, backers and donors um, backed out. And so now they're partnering up with this other person, this other company, who is all about rezoning in that neighborhood, in that particular area. And also, what's in that area, part of that rezoning situation is where the shelter is, okay? He didn't understand how deep the shelter was to the family, to his mother, until his daddy had to tell him when he found out because they had put it on the newspaper. Now, see, he wasn't trying to let it get out there yet because they do convinced him, like, once you get the nomination, once you get in there, you can go in there, you can change any and everything that you want to. And so he convinced him that that was going to be cool. Next thing you know, it's already on the newspaper. You know what I'm saying? And so the daddy was mad. But um, eventually, I'm glad that, of course, you know, he came to his senses and he he didn't take the meeting or he didn't take that team with the people that was doing the rezoning and all that stuff. You know how they do with black folks. They always try to take our land and shit. You know what I'm saying? Put a supermarket through it, and we can't even go up in there because it's too goddamn expensive. I, I ain't got time for it, okay? I ain't got time for it. Building lofts, because that's what they wanted. Building lofts and stuff, and we can't even get in it. <laughs> you know, gentrification like mug, okay? Meanwhile, you got that going on. Then also... Aunt May was like a background singer for just about everybody, okay? And it was the way when she first came onto the scene and she got out the car. And she, you could have swore she was a superstar herself, okay? And then she had her hair pent up. Now, she went in there to go cook, and she got another wig. <laughs> Baby, she said, I'm going to change my clothes. That means I'm going to change my hair. This is my cooking hair and my cat can. Okay, baby, that food that she cooked them on that first night, and they made that little boy try that food. Baby, I would have just, I would have threw up right in front of her face. Like, you will not try me like this, okay? All this type of food from different places or whatever. Baby, the way her and Lonnie was going back and forth, it was hilarious, okay? And Lonnie is a do-dirt nigga. Like... How do you go to the store? Because your wife is telling you to pick up a certain, some, some, a few ingredients. It seemed like they was going to make some banana pudding. Because that's what the ingredients, I heard some bananas or whatever in there too. And then you get flirted on and you flirt back with somebody that was working there named Jasmine, played by Carrie Hilson. And baby, Carrie Hilson is beautiful, okay? I said, God damn. Too bad you just, but she cute as fuck. Okay, we can't take that from her. But it this says a lot about her. What it like? Okay, you knew who he was because of the sports and because I guess her daddy knew the sports players and all that stuff. But at the same time, she actually was attracted to him. And that's not saying that he's not an attractive guy. It's just because of the age thing. And I'm just like, you looking for a daddy too? Is that what it is? And then the next time he come up in there, he go, she go tell him to come in the back and show her thong and all that stuff. And they go do it in the back on your job. And then Rachel had came up in there. And, 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 and of course, she, Jasmine knows Rachel because I guess Rachel was friends with Jasmine's older sister. All right. And so, um, 
<laughs> the phone kept on blowing up because Lonnie kept on texting him, uh, texting her and everything. And she was like, oh, who's that? You know, and I don't even think Rachel asked to see who it is. She said, look, don't we look cute together? Baby, when she saw that picture, she said, oh, you know what? You could come over to our house for thanks, uh, for Christmas. You ain't got to spend it alone because she said, you know, she ain't want to spend Christmas alone or whatever, but that's what it seemed like she going to have to do. Plus her man that she got that she just met two days ago is going to fly her out to Chicago. That's where they stay at. They stay at Chicago. I said, oh my goodness, why would you do that? Okay, the whole time, and I'm thinking, Cheryl, you judging Rachel and your own front yard ain't even together. Your household is trash, all right? And she knew it. She knew it. And so when they invited that girl to the um, Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas, whatever, it was one of those situations where <laughs> Rachel and Cheryl... After the food got messed up in the oven, they was going at it again in the kitchen. And then they was trying to, you know, see who going to make their food first over again. And so they had both reached up into the uh, the cabinet. And that's where they found the mama's tin can that had her recipes in there. And so that caused them to bond a little bit, right? So at this point, it's like, we, 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 we cool. We cool. And so they get to the dinner and when old girl comes over, mind you, Rachel had called her and said, don't come, but she don't listen to her voicemails. And so she came anyway. I mean, at least she came with a dish. I ain't going to lie. That was okay to me. I said, because if you would have came empty handed, mm, what are you doing here? All right. But at the same time, I was just like, girl, girl. And I know Rachel was feeling some type of way. You know, she didn't want the girl to know uh, that she knew who Lonnie was and all of that stuff, whatever. She, Rachel was having second thoughts because her and Cheryl was in a good place already. And so I'm just sitting there like, no, after all this time that she been coming at your throat just because y'all bonded over y'all mama's recipes. If y'all ain't got the situation and the trouble out uh, as to what it was that got y'all in the place that y'all at. Baby, still do what you had to do. And truth be told, you did what you had to do. Because even though that they weren't in a good place, she still was looking after her sister even though she was using it for her own advantage. Okay? I don't care what nobody said. I would have did the same thing. You call me petty, vindictive, or whatever. I'm going to do what I have to do. Okay? Baby, I'm the only one that's going to make my sister look stupid. And no nigga going to make my sister look stupid. Okay? We not going to have that. And so, you know, when they found out that he was cheap. And said that he was there taking care of his old mean grandmama Cheryl. Mind you, his wife's name is Cheryl. And that's when um Cheryl got up and said, I'll show you who grandma is and got the shotgun. And when Monique said, <laughs> who was no when uh Jasper was like, Can you tell me who this is? And I was like, This is his wife. Bitch, oh, don't call me a bitch, dumb bitch, young bitch, mean bitch. Come on, Lonnie, if you can bring one of these hoes up in here, make sure they got some sense. That was the line of the movie for me, okay? Baby, when, um, when, um, <laughs> Rachel and Cheryl was coming down those steps and they was moving and they was pushing each other and Monique said, push your bitch again, push your bitch again. That shit was hilarious, okay? It was Monique throughout the whole movie. It was, it was just her. I just feel like... We would have not, it wouldn't have been the same flavor if Monique nor Lonnie would have been there. Okay. Um, but mostly Monique for me, you know. Um, <laughs> so basically, Lonnie is done. Okay. Meanwhile, you know, the family also had another situation that was going on because the father was thinking about selling the house. And he kept on looking at the papers ever since the movie first came on. You know, he was just pondering if he wants to sell this house. And I wouldn't be upset at him if he wanted to pe sell the house because it's full of a lot of memories. His wife is no longer there. And it's too many memories that probably hurt him to keep on thinking about that. And then he's the only one in that big house. They don't come back often. You know what I'm saying? And so if he wanted to sell it, I wouldn't have been mad like that. I will understand the sentiment to value to it, but I will also understand why he will probably want to sell it. Evan found the papers because he was dropping off a Christmas gift early to his daddy and put it in the room. 
and um, he found the papers, and of course he made a big production of it at the the way he threw them papers at that on the table at him at the dinner. I said, "Excuse me, sir, you done lost your goddamn mind." I said that was so disrespectful, and I'm so glad he. Ooh, you better be glad that man couldn't get up too fast, cause he should have slapped the dog shit out of you, cause the way he hit him, hit that. Bam! I said, oh, it could have gave him a paper cut. Okay? It was bothering me, you know? Um, And they was all, oh, my God, so you going to sell the house? Oh, Mama would have talked to us about it. And Mama did this, this, this. And the whole time he kept saying, it's my house. And then he had to scream it for them to understand that it's my house. And at the end of the day, are y'all there helping him? Are y'all there helping him out with this house? No. Are y'all visiting on a regular? No. And you can tell Cheryl wants to be a daddy's girl, okay? Because it's like everything, she just want to do everything for him. You know, that's just what it was, too. It bothered me a little bit. Um, <laughs> but then Evan gets up in his feelings. He leaves, gets up in the car, takes some pills, winds up driving too fast, and gets into a car accident. Now, earlier, they was playing football. Him and Lonnie gets into it because Lonnie tripped him. And they was like, Lonnie, that's his career that you could have messed up and all this stuff or whatever. Unlike yours, because that's when Rachel got Lonnie together. Like, we already know people that play overseas is the ones that didn't get a chance to go to the NBA. You couldn't get drafted in the NBA, so you go overseas and all this stuff. And that's when uh, Cheryl was like, well, at least he had a career because we don't know what you do. Okay? But at the same time, I'm sitting here like... So you get pissed off about him almost breaking your leg or whatever, could have twisted your ankle and all that stuff and had you sitting out for another season and miss your chance of getting drafted and all that. And then you go get and throw a tantrum and get in the car, drive real fast, take some pills, get out your mind and get into a car accident and you could have injured yourself. You better be glad you just hurt your arm, you know, all because he can't deal with the fact that his mom is dead. Mama was supposed to be there for me. She was going to be my date to draft day. I said, I know. Shit happens. You know what I'm saying? You got to let it out. You can't let that stuff build up. You can't let it build up. You know what I'm saying? But at the end, we do see that Malachi comes over. And at one point in time, that scene where Evan and Rachel had got into it, he locked her outside. And she got stuck in the window. And when Malachi was trying to open that window for her, it looked like they was doing it from the back. <laughs> I said, okay, okay, that is nasty, but we get it. And then we get a scene with them as well to understand why she then, you know, was giving him so much uh, fever was because, you know, he was supposed to take her to prom or something like that. But his friend was talking about how um, basically taking the nerdy girl, uh, um, nerdy neighbor to prom, trying to play her or whatever. And she was mad that Malachi didn't stand up for her. And so he was like, if you would have known and you would have stayed, you would have known that I was the one that broke his nose because of that. And so I was like, oh, okay. You know, and so he came back and he was dressed up as the prom, you know, and she went in the house. Now, let me just tell you this. How the hell she go up in the house? Now, she came out, she had on some um, gray pants, a, a, a gray sweater, a shirt. She had her braids all the way down. She went back up in the house, right? For a good 30 seconds, she was able to put take all of that off, put a dress on that she found from Cheryl's old prom dress because she said she burnt hers after she got pissed off about what happened and put her hair in a neat-ass bun. All of them braids. Who did that in 30 seconds? I said, what in the movie magic? <laughs> oh, it was cute. I can't wait to get to school each day. And I see you around the way. As that is my shit. Okay, Troop. The Jackson 5s, then Troop. Uh, and then B5. All of them did the remake of that. Um... <laughs> I like all versions, too. Okay, it was cute. It was cute. But, you know, basically, moral of the story is just come together for family. And I did like the fact that when they came to, um, at the end, um, Cheryl did give uh, Rachel $20,000 so that she could finish school. So that she was like, if you're going to represent me in my divorce, you need to finish law school. So here's $20,000. I said, oh, that was cute. That's cute. Whatever. And, um, 
that's just how it was. Everybody got together and everybody was cool, you know, and they decided not to sell the house. This is one of those movies, like, if you need something that's not serious, that's going to make you laugh, and especially if you're, you know, I'm black and you like black movies, black Christmas movies or whatever, this is one of those ones along with this Christmas that's very feel, uh, feel good, wholesome, funny. I liked it. I like it. If you want to laugh, just go ahead and pop it on. It's on Peacock, you guys. And if you don't see me, and if I don't see y'all, or I should say, before Christmas, have a merry, merry Christmas, okay? Peace, y'all.